there's some leaves over here, Molly. Millie's garden was a great place to find interestingly shaped leaves for Molly's collection. It was a place they might find other things too. Oh, look, Molly. What about this one? It's an interesting shape. I've already got one like that. It's pretty. Well, let's see what else. Ah, oh, here's a whole pile. Hundreds and hundreds of leaves. There must be some in here you don't have. Let's see. Oh, look. Yeah. An egg. Can you tell what sort of egg it is? Do you know what's inside it? Sorry, Molly, I don't know very much about eggs. Maybe it's a chicken. Buck, 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 Lots of things come in eggs. You never know. But what? What is it? Well, if you're patient, it might hatch, and then you'll find out. Mm. Here. Amazing. There's a little baby animal in here. And this will be ours. Oh, what is it? Maybe it's a goose. Honk, 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 If you're not careful, you won't have anything at all. That egg needs to be looked after. You'll need to give it extra special care if you want it to hatch. Mm. How? What do we do? You need to find somewhere that's always warm and soft. Perfect. Maybe there's a snake in the egg. Yeah, a slippery snake. <coughs> Look out! Good catch. Oh, that was close. Come on, Marmalade. We need it to keep the egg warm. I know. We won't frighten you again, Marmalade. I promise, no more snakes. Come out. Please. Good girl. Every day, Millie and Molly hoped that the egg might hatch and wondered what little animal might emerge. It could be a crocodile. <laughs> Please, Marmalade, I promise not to make any more crocodile noises. I promise I won't either. It could be a platypus. What noise does a platypus make? I don't know. Maybe they don't make a noise. As the days and weeks went by, even Millie and Molly's friends, like Humphrey, tried to guess what kind of egg it was. I know what's inside that egg. What? A dinosaur! Tyrannosaurus Rex from outer space! <laughs> Please, Marmalade, come down! Humphrey's gone away, and dinosaurs from outer space don't exist. <laughs> Do they? Cause, well, I don't think so. After nearly a whole month of Millie and Molly patiently watching the egg and patiently wondering about the egg and patiently coaxing marmalade out of all sorts of hiding places, something began to happen. Look, it's moving. It's cracking open. <gasps> what is it? Shh. It's a duckling. A duckling! A cute little duckling! He's gonna be our duckling! He'll need a name. Um, let's call him Beaky. That's a good name. Beaky. But Beaky wasn't Millie's duckling, nor Molly's duckling. Beaky had seen Marmalade first, so Beaky thought Marmalade was his mother. Oh, that's so cute! So wherever Marmalade went, Beaky went too. <laughs> to breakfast. To lunch. Hey, that's not a dinosaur from outer space. No, Mickey thinks he's a cat. <laughs> a cat? Funny looking cat. <laughs> he thinks Marmalade is his mummy. Watch. Oh. Oh. So when Millie and Molly wanted to teach Beaky about water, oh. poor Marmalade had to come to But Marmalade's patience was really tried when Beaky was learning how to pet. <laughs> oh, Marmalade. Marmalade, what are you doing up there? Oh, little Beaky's so cute. But little Beaky didn't stay little. 
<laughs> Millie, Molly, I think it might be time for Beaky to go back to where he belongs with other ducks. But, Mum! No, it's not fair to him and it's definitely not fair to me. <laughs> Look at the mess he makes now. I don't want to have to clean this up forever. But we'll clean it up. Yeah. But when Millie saw her mother give a look like that, <gasps> Millie knew they would have to find a new home for Beaky in the park with the other ducks. <laughs> of course, there was only one way for <laughs> Millie and Molly to get Beaky to go to the park. Come on, Marmalade. You know Beaky won't follow us. Only you. All the other ducks at the park seemed to love the pond. So Millie and Molly were sure Beaky would want to join them. Go on, Beaky. Go and play with the other ducks. Make some new friends. <laughs> she still wants to be with Marmalade. Hmm. Maybe if we hide Marmalade, then Beaky will go to the other ducks. So Millie and Molly hid Marmalade where Beaky couldn't see her and tried again. Shoo! Come on, Beaky, into the pond now. Oh, you don't go behind the tree. Beaky, no! Oh, we found Marmalade. What now? I know. We'll hide Marmalade in a better place. So with Marmalade cleverly hidden, Millie and Molly tried once again. Molly, into the pond! Come on, Beaky! You like it here? This is your new home! Please, Beaky, be a good duck! Aha! Beaky will have to go to the pond now! Huh? Oh, no! <laughs> never going to join the other ducks. You'll have to be more patient. But, Mum... Beaky can't stay here. You'll just have to keep taking him back to the park until he stays there. So each and every day, Millie and Molly took Beaky and, of course, Marmalade to the park and tried all sorts of tricks to get Beaky to stay with the other ducks. <laughs> But each and every day, Beaky would follow them back home again. Until one day, Beaky saw something in the park that was different. of days before they visited Beaky again. Hurry up, Mum! Please! I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm sure Beaky isn't going anywhere. Even Marmalade was keen to see how Beaky was settling in at the park. But when they arrived, they were in for a surprise. There's his friend. Where's Beaky? Maybe he didn't like it here, <gasps> but didn't know the way home and got lost. Now, now, don't think the worst. He might be here yet. Have a good look around. Here, Beaky! Beaky, Beaky! Come on, Beaky! Come out, come out, wherever you are. Beaky! Beaky! Come on out, Beaky! Beaky! We've looked everywhere. <sighs> Maybe a dust thief came and put Beaky in a bag and... Let's give it a bit longer. Where's Beaky's friend gone? He might know where Beaky is. Look, 
Beaky is sitting on some eggs she's laid. And all this time we thought Beaky was a boy duck. Does this mean Beaky's going to have a family? I think it does. But this time you won't have to guess what's in the eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't long before Beaky brought her new family to show Millie and Molly. Because they were the best of some friends. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Beaky! Together. It's the best jungle gym money can buy. What if we had this in our playground? This school doesn't have that sort of money. It costs a lot a jungle gym like that. Aww. Oh, you're not going to give up that easily, are you? Molly? We could save up our pocket money. You'll need a little more than that, I'm afraid. Hmm. Millie? We could sell something. Yeah, yes. Idea. Any ideas? Biscuits? We could make biscuits and sell them. A biscuit factory. Chloe? I think biscuits are a bad idea. Huh? Bad idea? Yeah. Let's sell a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Humphrey, if you have something intelligent to say, put your hand up. Sorry, Miss Blythe. Indeed. Chloe, you have another suggestion. I think we should make chocolates. Mmm, chocolates. <laughs> well, shall we have a vote? Who wants to make chocolates to raise money for the jungle gym? Biscuits? Well, biscuits it is. Hmm. It was your idea, Millie. You'd better come up with a plan. Well, um, Alf is good with numbers. He could work out how many biscuits we need to make. Yes. And I know where to get a good recipe. And I know all about ovens. Good, Poppy. Yes, everyone should pitch in. Sophie's careful, and so is Chloe. So, um, they could buy all the ingredients from the shop. I'm not helping. I'm going to do my chocolates. But if you don't all work together, it'll be harder. I can make the money all by myself. Well, then, I wish you good luck. You'd all best get cracking, then. Aunt Maud had a fine biscuit recipe. Just a minute. But Molly needed Millie to come with her. Sometimes Aunt Maud could be a bit, well, snippy. Here's the recipe. Thanks, Aunt Maud. You're very kind. <laughs> Little sticks. Sophie, I've got a job for you. Here's a list of everything we need to make the biscuits. But Sophie can't carry it all on her own. Now that Chloe isn't helping, I'll help her. But you are going to do the oven. I can do the oven. How hard can it be? So Sophie and Poppy collected all the ingredients they needed for the biscuits. Hi, Chloe. <laughs> as soon as Sophie and Poppy were back, the real biscuit making began. <laughs> While Millie's mum watched Jack carefully put the biscuits in the oven, Chloe was working hard too, making her chocolates. Two cups of cocoa. A cup of peanuts. Even though she had no help, Chloe didn't seem to be having any problems at all. Not like over at Millie's house. <coughs> Be 
careful, they'll be hot. They're burned. <gasps> the oven was on too high. Can't use those. They're wasted. Oh, oh no. no. Sorry. Maybe Poppy <gasps> should have done the oven. Don't worry, Jack. Yeah, we'll just make some more. Yeah. But my sons say that we haven't got enough money for any more ingredients. But we won't need any more ingredients, as long as we don't burn any more biscuits. I'll help you with the oven. Then we'll both be good at it. But we'll need to sell every biscuit we make. George! Now, George was a very good salesman. He persuaded the cafe owner to sell some biscuits. And the bookshop owner to sell some biscuits. And even the pet shop owner agreed to sell biscuits to his customers. But could the class make biscuits without burning them? Here comes the next batch. Are they all right? Let me see. Perfect. Good one, Jack. Poppy helped. Let's make another batch while these get finished. Meg, get ready. Now, Meg was meticulous, always good with details, so she spread the icing. Then Tom had an eye for the middle. He placed the jelly beans just right. And Humphrey, well, Humphrey took care of quality control. Mm. Ah. Finally, Elizabeth, who had the neatest writing, did all the packaging and labelling. Biscuits. No, we just have to work harder. Let's finish making the rest of the biscuits. Puppy and Sophie, you have to start selling what we already have. Hello, Mr Limpy. Hello, Poppy, Sophie. What can I do for you? Would you like to buy some biscuits? We're trying to get enough money to buy a jungle gym for our school. Oh, I just bought some chocolates from Chloe. She said she was doing the same thing. Oh. Despite little setbacks, Thank you, Farmer Haggerty. everyone worked hard to sell all the biscuits in time for the end of the week. There you are. Thank you, Aunt Maud. Mm. <laughs> Not as good as I make. I'll have to eat them all, see if they get any better. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ferryman. We've still got a few places to visit if you're going to sell all those biscuits. Mm. Love these biscuits. <laughs> Will you be getting any more of these biscuits? Mmm, biscuits. The end of the week came quickly. Everyone waited at the toy shop for Harry to arrive with all the money they'd raised to buy the jungle gym. Hoping they'd raised enough. There he is! Come on, Harry! Well, I can see you've all worked very hard, but I'm sorry to say that there isn't enough money here to buy the jungle gym. But we sold all the biscuits we made! Now, don't be disappointed. You should all be very proud of yourselves, working together so hard, even if there isn't enough money for the jungle gym. Well, I've got some more money. <gasps> I made this money all by myself, without help from anyone. Well done, Chloe. Sorry, but huh? this still isn't enough. Sell all my chocolates. Maybe you should have worked in with the others. It's your fault we can't have the jungle gym. Humphrey. Sorry. At least you tried. We all tried. Very hard. <gasps> you wouldn't be interested in what's left of Chloe's chocolate as the rest of the payment, would you? <gasps> Sorry, don't like chocolate. Besides, there isn't nearly enough. <gasps> But if you made another batch of those tasty biscuits... <gasps> we don't have any money left to get more ingredients. Oh. Oh. Wait! Could we have a little more time, please? 
you can have till the end of the day, uh, but then I'll have to sell the jungle gym to another customer. That's not very much time. We can do it, but we need Chloe's help too. My help? Will you help us get the jungle gym? OK. Millie's plan was simple. Alf and Harry and George and Miss Blythe raced around town selling the rest of Chloe's chocolates. Working as a team, they soon sold them all and earned just enough money for Sophie and Chloe to buy ingredients for one more batch of biscuits, which Millie and Molly mixed. Jack and Poppy baked. Meg and Tom decorated. And, of course, Humphrey tasted. And finally, Elizabeth packaged. Well, now, those look like lovely biscuits. And there's still another hour to spare. Looks like you've bought yourselves a jungle gym. Miss Blythe, Miss Blythe, Miss Blythe, our customers want to know when's the next delivery of those tasty biscuits. I'm afraid you'll have to make your own from now on. This is a school, not a biscuit factory. But, but we don't have the recipe. Well, you'll have to ask Aunt Maud. Uh, <gasps> Aunt oh. Maud? What's wrong? Well, it's just that, well, she can be a bit, um, snippy. Well, perhaps if you all asked her together. Meanwhile, I've got my class to be looking after. <laughs> Miss Blythe decided she deserved the very last biscuit. While everyone else enjoyed the jungle gym, they had all worked so hard to get. <laughs> Molly loves her home and her dolly, but Molly really loves her pet, Tomcat. What are you doing, Tomcat? Despite his bad taste in gifts. Ah! Ew, a dead mouse! Tomcat! Dead! Ah! Tomcat! And Millie really loves her pet marmalade too. Despite the tricks that naughty cat gets up to. Hello, marmalade. You haven't seen my other shoe, have you? It must be under here somewhere. There it is! Ah! Not everyone loves cats as much. Millie's dad puts up with Marmalade because he knows Millie loves that cat. <sighs> Millie, can you come and get your pet out of my chair? Again? Sorry, Dad. Come on, Marmalade. You've got your own basket to sleep in. and make sure her toys go with her. I'm back! But most of the time, Millie's able to save Marmalade from getting into too much trouble. Uh, am I near the table yet? Stop! Who? Uh, what? Nothing. I wasn't going to trip over your cat, was I? Oh, no. <laughs> Just as well. <sighs> But one day, Millie's dad's tolerance for marmalade started to break down. Are you there? Marmalade! Quick! Ah! Out of dad's chair! Yes, dad? Has anyone seen my other lucky sock? Have you lost it? Lucky sock? Yes, Molly. Millie's dad has a big important business meeting tomorrow. He's got to wear his lucky socks. <laughs> Doesn't your dad have lucky socks? I don't think so. Well, I do. I was wearing them when I met Millie's mum. And I was wearing them when Millie was born. Good things happen when I wear my lucky socks. Of course, I wasn't wearing my lucky socks when we picked out Marmalade. Marmalade, get off Dad's chair. So for my big meeting tomorrow, I'll need my best shirt, my nicest trousers and both my lucky socks. Can I in a shirt? I'll help. All right. And I've just remembered where that sock might be. Hmm. Nope. Nah. No. Nada. Nix. Nine. Nothing! 
Sock except blue. Just keep the iron moving, otherwise you'll burn a hole in Dad's favourite pants. Then what'll he wear tomorrow? When you finish that leg, Millie, Molly can do the other. OK! Still can't find that sock. What happened to your head? That cat again. We've nearly finished ironing your best trousers for your important meeting. And we've already ironed your favourite shirt. It's over there. Oh, Marmalade! Marmalade, don't wash yourself in Dad's shirt! That cat! Don't worry. We've got time to wash and iron it again before tomorrow. Oh, OK. The pants! Your best pants! Oh, no! They're burnt! My best pants! What about my meeting? Well, there's always your second best pants. Yeah. It wasn't your fault, Millie. Marmalade's to blame. Again. <coughs> I'll definitely need my lucky socks now. Right. There'll be a hug for anyone who can find my missing lucky sock. We'll find it. Yeah, we'll help. <laughs> Sock. Any luck? Sorry, but at least we've got one lucky sock. One? That's worse than none. One lucky sock is bad luck. I have to have two lucky socks to give me good luck. Look how much bad luck I've had already today. Oh! Oh! <gasps> oh! This ice will keep the swelling down. Does it hurt, Dad? Only when I breathe. Well, don't worry, because we'll find that sock. We could ask everyone in town. That's a good idea, Molly. It could have blown off the line. Anyone could have it and not know who it belongs to. Or how important it is. Don't worry, Dad. We'll get your luck back before tomorrow. Thanks. <laughs> So, while Millie and Molly went looking throughout the whole town, Millie's dad continued to hunt around the house for his missing lucky sock. But without Millie around, Marmalade was going to get into more trouble. Lost a sock, eh? I have a similar problem. I think all the lost socks go to sock heaven. While yeah. Millie and Molly thought the idea of a sock heaven was funny, they were still worried that they wouldn't find that missing sock before tomorrow. Good luck! They asked Aunt Maud politely to lift her skirt. No. The butcher's socks came up to his knees. And Farmer Hegarty's socks looked far too big and woolly. No. And Miss Blythe didn't even have socks. Well, socks make my feet itchy. Millie and Molly wondered if the lost sock could ever be found. Sorry, Dad. We asked everyone in town. The day's nearly gone. I need that sock for tomorrow. Where is it? Just take a minute to think where you put it. That sock's got to be somewhere. You're right. Just a minute or two. I need to relax. No! Stupid cat! But you sat on her! She was sitting in my chair! That's it! Come here! Marmalade, you're going outside. But... And if she causes one more problem, she's not coming back in ever. <sighs> that night, Molly stayed over at Millie's house to keep her company. Since Marmalade wasn't allowed in. Poor Marmalade. She wants to come in. 
You heard, Dad. She's not allowed. Sorry, Marmalade. See you in the morning. While Marmalade tried to get to Millie, Millie's dad couldn't sleep. His important meeting was the next morning and he wouldn't be able to wear his lucky socks. Why don't you go and have a warm drink? Might help you sleep. You need to be rested for your meeting. Yes, I guess so. That's it. The cat goes outside forever. But Marmalade was only trying to get to me. Sorry, Millie. Marmalade has used up her nine lives. But Marmalade is my pet. I'm not saying you can't have a cat, but from now on, I don't want it getting under my feet, sitting on my chair or taking a bath on my shirts. Right. Where's your basket, Marmalade? It's going in the shed. The shed? Please, Dad, can't Mum lay sleep in my bedroom? We'll close the door and... Look! <gasps> my sock! My sock! My lucky sock! <laughs> Marmalade had it all along. She must have been using it to keep warm. Don't be cross with Marmalade. Cross? <laughs> I'm not cross. I'm thrilled. I now have both my lucky socks. Does this mean that Marmalade gets the hug? She found the sock. Shh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I guess she does. Here. Good marmalade. <laughs> well, I never thought I'd see that. <laughs> <laughs> The next day, Millie's dad was ready for his big meeting. Good luck! Yeah, good luck, Dad. Fingers crossed. Thanks, everyone. But I won't need your luck. Not when I'm wearing these. <laughs> 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 Millie was glad for her dad. She knew his important meeting would go well. But she was also glad that Marmalade wasn't in trouble anymore. At least, not for the moment. Meow.